All right. So this is a picture he's brain call with Scott Mooring. Um, we've known each other for a while. Scott is a co-conspirator in Open Global Mind uh, and sent me a lovely, lovely, the, the kind of email, like, if you think it's an honor to help humans figure out what to do with their life energy, and I fall in that camp, then the email that Scott sent me like a couple of days ago was just fantastic and perfect. And um, so, so this is a, a call to sort of focus on what was in that, uh, that message and where you were aiming and try to help you steer and aim and think creatively about um, how you spend the rest of your life energy. Uh, and, and, and I'll ask you to sort of maybe go back into it in a second, but I recently heard of and installed a, a mental health app called 29K. It's at 29k.org. And the number 29K is just the average number of days a human has on Earth. And I was like, oh, that's a really good name. That's that's like how to, how to remind you of like the preciousness of our time together and, and all of that. Uh, yeah. And and also I'll say as caveat in, you know, as we can enter this conversation, I am no expert on maximizing the usefulness of every day I have on earth. Um, one of my problems is figuring the same thing out. So I'm hoping we sort of figure this out uh, in some sense uh, together. Yeah. So, um, and I'm, I'm happy to dive into a bunch of things that you wrote, but anything you'd like to sort of think about, talk about, put on the table as we start? Well, this will not be my first conversation like this. Um, it's kind of a theme having conversations like this with uh, like thinkers, uh, people who are interested in helping others provide frameworks on what do you want to be when you grow up sort of thing. Um, the other thing about it that I've noticed is once I put this on a calendar, the next several days gets me closer to an answer as I'm trying to prepare and think about it and that, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm 56. I'm noticing that I, I'm more aware of the 29K than I have been. And mm -hmm. perhaps that's because I've been able to say, mm, no, not this. Whereas normally I'm, oh yes, and, 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 and now I've been able to be a little more aware that no, I can't, I can't do all of those. And that then takes me down the path of, okay, well, if I can't do all of them, which ones can I do? And then it turns into which ones must I do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, cause, and then, so, so that's kind of the, the, the general framework that I've been it's an echo of all conversations that I've had before. And what I'm realizing that I'm, I'm trying to come to grips with is I make stuff. And I make stuff because I'm curious and I want to package it up and put it into a, I don't know, put it into something that's, that makes sense for me. Okay. I've made this little reminder poster of this idea I heard about. I think this is really interesting. And now that I made it, I look at it and I think, huh, well, I'm part of this little group that might like this. So then I share it with them. And more often than not, I get good feedback, which is one of the reasons that I continue to do it. It's not the, the primary motivator, but it's, it's, it's not, well, it's not the, it's not the impetus. The impetus is, oh, this is interesting. Hmm, wow, the more I look at this, this is really interesting. Oh, this fits my rules. It's a 80-20 solution. It's not a deep dive into every corner of complexity. It has parts that can be combined in different ways. So if I identify the key parts um, and you get those, not only do you have 80-20 for what you're looking at, but you also have ways that you can recombine it and, and that sort of thing. And, and they tend to be learn once, use many, you know, like, oh, okay. If I learn this, I can apply it in lots of different ways. 
And so that that drives me to to say, oh, these are these are really interesting things. I see people struggling, but mostly I see myself wanting to integrate these things I've learned or something that sounds interesting to me. And then I have this thing when I'm done. And uh, okay, well, what do I do with this? Okay, well, I don't know. So here, <laughs> you know, I, I share it with people. And um, what's uh, one of the other themes that I've just noticed, we'll tack this on. So themes of what those products tend to be, I've already described. Themes of who they're for is something I'm realizing. I would classify myself as an introverted thinker. I enjoy ideas. I enjoy talking about ideas with other people. That's how I like to be most socially, is discussing, discussing ideas. And I, I would used to say that I hate to say this, but this is just the truth. The things I make are who I spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. So I'm perfectly happy going down a rabbit hole for all day, you know, trying to sort out an idea. Anyway, so I realized, well, maybe, maybe who I'm making this for is other people like me, people who are novices in a field who want to get to a, not to a high level, but to get to a, a comfort level where they understand the basic tools of system thinking or the basic tools of how to make a presentation or you know whatever it happens to be. Um, and they are people who are a little more introverted, a little more in ideas, frameworks. Um, a lot of it is solo stuff, things that you can use with other people, but that you develop yourself so that when you're in a situation, you now have a tool or many tools, ideally. That's kind of what I've built over 30 years, 25 years, um, is all these little tools. Because I'm, I'm a little awkward in social situations and I feel way more confident when I feel like, oh, I have all these things I could potentially contribute. Um, and so that's exciting to me. And the last thing that I'll offer up is, well, there's a bunch of different categories that these fall in, frameworks, toys, tools for students, um, things like that. But what I've noticed in the part that I really started to come to terms with over the last several days was I keep asking people how to monetize this. I keep asking people if I should monetize this. Now I'm asking myself, like, why is that? And, and the answer that I came to was, well, I've built 25 years worth of stuff and I have other things that, are, that I'm deep in right now that are valuable. Okay, well, what does that mean? It means it's useful for other people, but does that mean that, that I'm missing an opportunity here that's just kind of a duh? Well, of course you should be having a pay to play model on this or no, that ties you up with a commitment and an obligation. And now you have to develop a community and a sales funnel and do your market, you know, and all this other stuff. And it's like, uh, no, <laughs> that's that not what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and so I guess at, at this point, I, I'll, I'll throw out, you know, pinball machines. I'll throw out the pinball metaphor that happened in the last couple of days. I am very fortunate to have had a decent education to grow up in a situation where I wasn't struggling. Um, I've struggled before, but never in any significantly serious way. Um, so this is a problem of overabundance in a sense, but I'm trying to think where I, where, oh, I know. So I will, the next 10, 15, 20, whatever years, those, I'm not worried about generating enough income 
What I'm worried about from the pinball side is that you can get 100,000 points, but you can also get a bonus multiplier, mm -hmm. which is 2x, 5x, you know? And it's like, I scored the same, I made the same shots. I did the same stuff, but now my points are twice or five times. And I think, okay, well, all of these things here, I have spent the last 25 years being fine with not selling them. Part of me trying to, but not really, because I guess I would have done it. That's kind of what I'm trying to come to grips with. And so is that, is that where I need to go? Is it, is it just accept, hey, you know what, just keep making these things and maybe one of them, someone's gonna say, hey, I wanna turn this into something. And there it goes, or just enjoy this as a lifelong hobby and go forward with that. Um, because on the income side, I have a very good partnership with a very good friend and that provides enough um, to get by. We're kind of developing a, it's a printing business. I do the design work. He does all the, the printing and production work. And I basically am a contractor, you know, in a sense, but we're, mm -hmm. you know, we're friends and, and partners and nothing formal, um, but I trust him hundred percent and it's growing. Okay, well, that's something that I can hitch my wagon to. I grabbed a freelance gig a couple of months ago and I realized very quickly that it was probably a bad idea because now I had I had three legs. <laughs> like I had okay, this this thing with my with my friend that I'm investing in, I had this freelance short-term thing and then I had these other things that were always kind of subconscious back of my mind and I could work on them you know like whenever the mood struck you know oh wow you know what I really need to do this thing and I would I would dive into it but I didn't have to it was just it had percolated long enough and and then it popped up and said hey work on me today um and the freelance thing turned into wow context switching all the time now I'm working on this, the, my, you know, the main thing that is generating the income. But then when I need to jump over to this little hourly other thing, it's like, okay, it's all these new people. It's different systems. It's different vendors. It's, everything is different. And I get my head wrapped around it. And what I realized was that I was now that was my subconscious and I didn't, I didn't care for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I'm still in the middle of that. And so I'm, I'm getting ready to, you know, have that conversation again to say, I'm not sure that this is for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you can hear that bell, mm -hmm. the 15 minute, it'll go off every 15. Oh, good. Is that to remind you to stay on task or what's, what is it? It's, or is it just a grandfather clock? I turned it on for this call just because I, I will go off in the weeds and that Sweet. 15 minutes felt like a, like an interesting scene and scene. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Okay. It's like a Takadoro. Yeah. Sort of Pomodoro for conversation. Right, right. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time I've used it. Um, but I I found it in one of my little sound makers and it's just one minute, five minute, 10, 15. And I thought, well, let's try, let's put that on because what I noticed when I had it on was that I could choose to switch tasks or choose to not, right. you know, just remind right. me, oh, wow, that little email that you wrote, you're still working on it. Hit send, <laughs> you know, and move on to the next one. Exactly. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the framework for this. And so I'm, I guess I'm, that's, I, I think that's pretty good for now. Um, cool. Very tiny thing before moving into some of the things you said. I've seen you in this background, in this setting for multiple times, and I only just figured out because I knew you do pinball art that that on one side of you are pinball machines, and on the other side, those are actually sort of decks or whatever you call them uh, of pinball games, right? 
Yes, these are, this is the main product that we have been developing. Um, and we're doing other things now, but yeah. the gist of it is pinball machines that we're helping are 20 to 30 years old. And it's a stainless steel ball bearing rolling around on ink. Mm -hmm. Just wears it off. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, they don't make any more of these. So, well, they're, they're making new ones, but they're the old ones. That's just what you have. And so we've created yeah. a, a product that helps bring, preserve the fun for you know, decades more, we hope. Love that. Um, so let me screen share for a second, because as you might expect, I created a thought for this call. So there's a picture screen call with, with you, uh, and I connected it up to pinball art and pinballs, which is where I realized, oh my God, in the background, those are pinball machines, etc. cetera. Uh, did you know that uh, Vin, uh, Fiorello LaGuardia got pinball banned? Because he saw um, that it, was, it was eating all of kids' time? No, yeah, did not know that. Just a tiny, just a tiny side note. Yeah, no, we knew uh, that it was it was gambling for a while. Like yeah. That. Oh, interesting. Um, so a couple of different things occurred to me, and one was I created sort of finding your your upward spiral, and I was like, what if you created activity boxes for kids? I was just like, hmm, what what because because you're constantly creative because you're constantly. Uh, inventing stuff. And I think you really like doing stuff for young people. What if you were the heart of a sort of subscription system uh, for those kinds of things? And that I found my way around uh, to different kinds of subscriptions to monthly surprises. And then I found my way to Birchbox and I realized that Katia Beauchamp and Haley Barna, the founders of Birch, are billionaires. They completely ate their lives. This is a big deal. I'm like, well, wait, 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 wait. Like, is there a way is there a way you could create a very small scale thing like this, for example, that um, where the surprises actually build, where they're modular and reusable, where now that you, so, so you've got this thing over here and if you need it later, we'll send it to you as a, as a backfill or a backup kit, but, but then you can use it in new ways or different kinds of ways. Um, that, because I, I think, like a piece of what it feels to me and, and like turn me back toward, toward what, what rings for you, but it feels to me like one of the things you love about systems thinking is kind of the systematizing, modularizing slice among the chaos of what systems do. That there's this, there's kind of systems thinking is about all kinds of forces interplaying, but, but if you can snag some of them, label and represent them well, and connect them to others in a way that's functional, educational, useful, something like that, that, that that's really good. And that, that helps people think. And I, I think one of your skills and life goals is helping other people think critically and figure things out. And there's, there's like a joy of figuring things out that figures really prominently for me yes. and, and you. Let, let me offer an addition to, to the theme that might be helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, something I realized uh, pretty late in life was that my first child was the first child of all of my friends. My first wet, my wedding was the first wedding I'd ever attended the college. What? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was the first wedding you'd ever been to. Um, when I went to college, that was the first college campus that I'd ever been on. Uh -huh. Um, et cetera. Um, I had never been to my, you know, to a corporate corporate workplace before. Um, I was, you know, in before I had my first job there, and it was it was just this realization that wow, all these things would have been uh, when you're packing to go camping, you make horrible mistakes, and the second time you pack, you're you're not just a little better you're like mostly there. Mm -hmm. And then every time after that, you, you can incrementally change it. And I feel like that's sort of the case with a lot of things. Your first experience teaches you so much. And what I sensed is like, wow, I'm a pretty good teacher 
to beginners. And one of the reasons is, is I know, I know what's important to know now mm -hmm. and what's, what can wait, what can wait until later. And I realized that, you know, a lot of that was based on my inexperience in a lot of situations. Like I just didn't know. And I had sort of wished like, wow, all these things I'm learning. If I had just known that ahead of time, it would have made such a difference. Like, you know, this is a really big decision right now. You're not gonna know that for 15 years, but, but this decision is critical. Um, and so, yes, I agree with you in the systems thinking side of things that it's the reason I was drawn to the work of the Cabreras and I'm, I'm interacting with them almost daily now um, is that the way they teach it is literally for anyone. It's not for policy changers and and you know massive organizations and and you know global complex problems. It's it's like how do I improve the way we get the kids out the door in the morning? You know, I mean, it's it's right down to the basic level and mm -hmm. it scales up. But what's What's fascinating to me is I'm always on the lookout for the things that work and work kind of every time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the one thing in the one situation which you can collect millions of little tips and tricks on. I like work reliably. Yeah. 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 It's the ones that, that really apply across, across domains. So uh, this is fascinating what, looking at the things that you've come to, this idea of activity boxes for kids that stack. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a really fascinating thing. Um, yeah, I had a, a, a wonderful set of conversations with a woman over in, um, in the UK. She and her husband were neuro, neuroscientists and she had seen my wooden toy. And she said, hmm, we would like to use that as a way to teach other concepts. And so um various things happened we didn't we didn't take that anywhere further but we did have multiple conversations on it it's just a really interesting idea um and so i could see how how, how the things i have could could stack if they were in the hands of one person yeah over time and can we, is there, let's, let's just as an exercise, fold that back on the Cabrera research and DSRP and some of the frameworks that come out of their work. Yep. Because a, a, a narrow way of looking at that is that, hey, maybe the Cabreras would love to have a venture into education for young humans. Uh, I don't know if they've already done that, but maybe they'd be really interested and you could just say, hey, I'll, I'll go do that as a venture. And and I'm, I'm doing this, I'm saying this gingerly because I think you're trying to avoid one thing eating your entire life and becoming the, well, now we need a business plan and a logo and, and all of that kind of stuff. But, but I know that you have this passion for systems thinking and that their flavor, their take on systems thinking really, really rings your bell. So I'm trying to figure out, can you, can you carry that into young people in a way that sits in their world persistently over time and builds. So, um, and, can, have, and can that even be like an educational venture without saying that yeah. in some sense? I have, a, um, so they developed, they, so very quickly, they had the theory. Derek had the theory, Laura um, had the um, translational research. So how to make it practical and they went and took his theory, which they were teaching to grad students and took it into elementary school classrooms for 10 years and okay. said, and said, can we do this? And they came out with, yes, they, yes, they can. And the, the end result was a book called Thinking at Every Desk. Um, so yes, that's, that's aligned with what they're doing. And they play, they play in both levels. They teach at West Point, they teach at Cornell. They also have, you know, their stuff is systems thinking daily which is the most mundane problems, just use it, use it every day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really interesting. And my strategy, if it is a strategy, 
again, it's always curiosity led. I noticed that if I just kept my little systems thinking social network open, I was happy. That was plenty, plenty of social media for me, just mm -hmm. in this one area. And over time, I've continued to build a reputation in that group as exactly what I've described. I, newbies come in. I'm the one who I, I'm, I'm a good person to ask about certain things that are like, how do I get started with this? You know, and, and, um, and it's, it's, I've developed a little bit of cloud in that area, which is really wasn't the intention. It's just kind of what happened. I'm enjoying it. And what I'm kind of doing is just playing in that space. I don't know if formalizing it is, you know, right now they've, they're, you know, I'm being asked to test. Can you test this little set of classes, mini classes that we've made, you know, and, and things like that. And, and mm -hmm. it's like, hmm, yeah, yeah, sure I can. And I don't know, I don't know where it's going to go. And I don't mm -hmm. know if, if there's any formal plan there, but it's something that I, I definitely enjoy. And I have these books that I'm writing, systems thinking kids books, and those are for really young ones. Those are, are definitely elementary school. Um, I'm enjoying that. And S small, yeah. small tangent, but um, yep. please. some of these kits that go out are basically just flat pack kits. They're, they're either flat pack, um, uh, really thin plywood that is die cut into pieces that you pop out and build a dinosaur or a, a lawnmower or whatever, or they're die cut paper that you punch out and make dioramas or dolls or whatever but but the the so the, the die cut side of this seems like it minimizes shipping costs maximizes uh flexibility and other sorts of things and that's what uh, i build all day i mean obviously like yeah exactly it. anything printed or uh cut or produced in a you know, like if you would go to a high-end printing shop right? and, you know, I can print on plastic, I can print on, you know, uh, we can cut, we have a laser cutter, you know, the, so those sorts of things I can make. And you're saying that, like, for example, I was goofing around on the lake, you know, and it's like, oh, here's the, here's my DSRP mobile. I've got, you know, distinctions. I've got systems got relationships and i've got perspectives yeah you know and it that's brilliant i, I love like, that okay well there's one you know that, that's just like there's only one of these i made it for fun it took me a couple hours and it's done mm -hmm. so so like all right now what you know uh, well that, and, and so fun. so so i think you and i share this like curiosity thing like really really strongly we're we're both extremely curious people um well, you're probably, openness <laughs> you're probably more of a maker than i am i think you 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 turn turn things into material objects a bunch um, that's just because well my my degree is in graphic design yeah and i i stumbled into the maker space simply because of my because of that Mm -hmm. and so it, it's, and, and I, I like words, I like writing. And so the combination of those two things, you know, I can make things that seem magical to other people. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that's just because I have some design skill and, and I can, I can write. Um, I am not electronics, electronics genius. So I'm not, you know, any of that stuff. I just make visuals mm -hmm. and, and they look like, they look good because, uh, you know, that's what I do, but it's, it, they're funny because I, I remember some of my friends in, in college had went into careers that were much more, I'll just use the word lucrative or, or impactful or anything, like, but they didn't have anything you could show. And my, my career is very showy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, look at all the things I made, you know, so. It's like, look, here's the thing. Here's an object. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I love that. And, and a piece of what I'm trying to think of is, since that comes easily to you and you're very generative that way, is there a way to pick up the pieces that you've been making and turn them into passive income streams um, as part of a kid's subscription kit set or as something completely different? Uh, but is, is there a way um, 
you could even just take a short video of things that you've done and post them on Instagram and see who subscribes and, and, and things like that, just to, to see, to see what's out there. It's certainly easy enough to, to um, test the market in some sense, uh, but, but I'm, I'm kind of playing with names. Like, could you be the, the guide for curious system makers or something like that, where, um, you bring kids of a particular age group, the, your favorite, favorite age group uh, along. And um, it's funny, uh, one of my uh, inspirations here are the Vlog Brothers, Hank and John Green. Do you, are you familiar with them? Uh, you probably know them. One of them is a composer, the other one writes novels. Uh, the Fault in Your Stars is the one of the novels that got turned into a movie uh, that one of these brothers did. But they started out just as like very early YouTube celebrities. Uh, I learned about them because a friend's daughter came and joined one of our meetings and told us about um, uh, nerd fighteria, nerd fighting. And nerd fighteria is not fighting nerds. It's nerds fighting world suck. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard about. OK, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. And, and so Hank and John Green now put, I don't, countless really good videos now about science and literature. And they're, they're almost like their own Khan Academy off to the side. But they, they kind of, they focus on helping tweens and teens sort things out, make sense of the world and live better lives and all of that. It's just, it's, it's lovely. Um, but in the middle of doing that, they invented a bunch of things like nerd criteria and DFTBA. Do you know what DFTBA means? Oh, D-F-T-B-A. So don't forget to be awesome. Yeah. And, 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 and so things like that just pop out of their community and they're memorable and you're like, wow, sure. okay, yeah. this, this is really interesting. And, and, and also, since you're kind of an introvert, maybe it's not your flag to carry to, to be the leader of this, but maybe you find something like Blog Brothers or somewhere else and you expand their offer into the spaces that you're good at. I don't know, but but you know you have a gig right now that causes you to do a massive cranial context switch every time you have to sit down and start doing their work, right? A whole new set of software and relationships yep. and tools yep. and the thing. You almost have to like replace your head, plop in the other head to do this work. Uh, and could you replace that work with a project that pays as much, but but is like yeah. really, really nicely aligned with everything else that you're doing in your curiosity and your instincts. The only thing about that is that, that I, I have those and I have multiple ones of those. They just don't pay anything. Right. And that's, I don't know if that changes it qualitatively or if it is just something that I've been hesitant to dive into. You know, it's like, what's the difference between having this done and having this done in a way that other people could, could buy, right. you know, and I think, okay, I don't know, maybe it completely changes it and it turns into birch box, you know, in a, in a negative way, you know, or maybe it doesn't change it at all. And it actually, yeah. like, why didn't I do this 15 years ago? Cause now I have all these people who are like, yeah, 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 this is great. You know? And I don't feel like a schlub for, for, marketing because they're saying no this is this is great i want more of it so Please. somebody some in the spirit of testing the market and figuring things out somebody sent me a link to five minute logos which is a tumblr account yeah that was me oh that was you okay good yeah. i'm like wait where'd that come from um it's a brilliant idea yeah and, it, and it's like okay so what could you do this like that well i do it already i just don't charge for it and, and it's also, it's not in such a tight niche. Yeah. You know, um, you know, he doesn't do five minute headlines. You know, he just does five minute logos, right? And so that, that's one of the, one of the things that I'm, I'm hesitant to, to constrain simply because what I'm finding is that the older I get, the more these things enhance each other you know i'm finding that that it's not it's not turning into these like it continues to go like that it's like 
all these things, it, it's more like this, you know? Totally hear you. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm drawn to things like Don't Forget to Be Awesome and Nerd Fighteria and that sort of stuff. Um, I've made a play pledge, you know, to play every day. Um, you know, it's it's just a it's just a thing, you know. All right, there's my play pledge. You know, it has the play bow, mm -hmm. you know, which is, you know, that's it's a universally un un understood thing that every mammal does, you know, it, and it, and my uh, about the introversion side, this this connects in here. Um, I volunteered to be a hockey coach a number of years ago, and I did that for, geez, was it eight years, maybe something like that? I don't know. And my approach was always on the, the ones who were on the cusp of, of learning how to just get competent. You know, they weren't the ones who were going for the, the varsity first line. They were the ones who were trying to go from this is this is hard to this is fun. And that's that's just that lit my fire. I loved seeing that. And one of the things was, you know, it. I just noticed that my optimism, it's, it's like, I have 100% confidence you can do this. Mm -hmm. And that comes, comes through. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's, that's part of my, my brand, if you will, you know, is that I've tested it, I've tried it. I've worked really hard to pick just these five, all these 45 over here, you don't have to worry about just these five. Trust me, if you just mm -hmm. do this and I'm going to help you get from I can't to I can, and then you're going to see that if you can on those five, mm -hmm. wow, now you're playing hockey. Look at that, you know. Exactly. And, and, and I think you're having a similar problem to what I have, which is these are labors of love for you. Mm -hmm. like you really love doing this that comes naturally and you enjoy doing it and and you're afraid of what would happen if you monetized it because if you suddenly turn something into a subscription on the one hand if it takes off and becomes really successful you become a prisoner to it on the other hand it changes the the, the nature of the interactions because now it's pay for play or whatever uh, which is different um so in a totally I, I, that resonates strongly with me as well. But I'm trying to figure out how, how might you um, take these things that you're just gifted at doing and make subscription services out of them. And, and, and you, you, know, you don't need a whole bunch of people um, paying you a subscription like on Substack or something like that, except with images and, and projects. But you don't need a whole bunch of people paying you something to equal the money you're getting for your mm -hmm. like third your third gig right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you you are you're right there. That's that's one of the things I'm afraid of. I have had situations where I was at um, working a regular job because I've, I've been consistently in that space, and I was doing lunch and learns, and then the lunch and learns. People started to tell other people, hey, you need to do this. Hey, and it started to grow. And now I couldn't just take a long lunch and go do this. Mm. And I, I stopped doing them just completely. Because mm -hmm. I thought this is getting popular. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a problem that so I can't strange. address right now. And I couldn't address it because I couldn't leave. They weren't, it wasn't big enough for me to leave, you know. It was, uh, yeah, labors, labors of love for sure. Um, and, you know, I, I think like, do you have any context on this? So, you know, a hundred, I think, I think a hundred years ago or 200 years ago, all the way back, things have been very, maybe similar. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so many things have changed in the last, you know, even 50 years where I can actually have a global market. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. Well, on the flip side of that, most people through most time have just had hobbies and things that they did. You know, mm -hmm. they made they made one toy for their grandchild, which I did. And then they did their their next thought was not, how can I kickstart this? Right. Right. You know? yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was just they just did that. And 
and I, I, that's my, my on the fence struggle is like, okay, it's okay to offer that up because people would, would love it. But does that, is that, am I then just going to let them down? Cause it's like, okay, well, I started doing this. I just can't anymore. I don't want to make any more of those, yeah. you know, um, I like with the wooden toy, like, okay, well, if there was somebody who wanted to make them and gave me, you know, 5%, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's great. I don't even know what that means, but it's like, yeah, all right, let's, let's do that. Um, Cause I don't, I don't want to make them, you know, that's not what, what I don't want to, I don't want to build a bunch of toys. Yeah. I want to um, figure them out. So this may be inspiring to you. It's really crazy sounding to me, but very inspirational. George Carlin threw out his material every year. He, he insisted on like inventing new comedy and he just got better. Uh, Louis C.K., for better or worse, who got himself stuck in, uh, in Me Too in terrible ways, but did the same thing inspired by George Carlin. I appreciate Louis, Louis C.K.'s humor kind of humor too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so what I'm what I'm kind of saying by this is what if the thing that we're that we uh, me as a potential um, subscriber, customer, backer uh, of your venture was realized that periodically you're just going to take a left turn uh, and you're going to shift and do something else and that something else is going to follow your interests and passions. And because I know your intentions and your direction, I'll be like, and it's going to be cool. And so, and so that would give you the breathing space to just follow something until it peters out on its own or until you know you've, you've explored it and then pick up the next thing that you know is interesting and useful and do that for a while. Um, but still, and then second thought, and not charge your buddies and your close intimates for this for this project or the stuff that you do, but rather um, take the work products of your passion and your friends and your community, which remains free, and then charge someone else for them. Throw them over the fence into a place where they get a lot more exposure, a lot more people get to benefit from them. I mean, the, the play pledge you, uh, page you showed me, does that page exist online? Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I will, I will find it because, yeah, I just, I, because what I realized was that when I first made my website, which was, I don't, I don't even know if it was five years ago, maybe wasn't what it wasn't more than that. Yeah. It was because I realized that I was sending emails to individuals, I'm a very one-on-one -on -one communicator. And I would say, Hey, here's this play pledge thing that I came up with, da, 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 da. you know, and then I find somebody else and I go look at my email, I'd copy it, I'd paste it and I'd send it to another person. And I, I thought, you know, it'd be really nice if I could just send a link and that maybe other people might, might stumble on them. And then what I realized is, okay, wait a minute, everybody I send the play pledge to might be interested in think inside the box the creative model, but they'd never know about it right. because, I, right? And so, and then I just put it all on my site and I don't do anything with it other than put it on the site. Right, exactly. You know, now I can share a link. Okay, there, there's the play pledge. And I just Googled it. It was the second result for me in the Google search. The first one was the genius of play play coach. Right. Don't know what that one is. So here you are. And then I added it to my brain under more better. Yep. Um, and under play is essential to well-being, which I should connect to well-being. What I realized, I, I just have learned some stuff about uh, Piaget mm -hmm. and how his his work was was how play is how we develop our our morality as we're growing up, because you realize that, that fair play is a thing, and you learn that by playing with others, mm -hmm. and it's this it's this really interesting.
I just lost you. I'm going to stop the recording for a minute. Uh, good idea. Okay. Uh, okay, we're back after a little witch. So let me finish the rat story. I don't know how far we got. So when rats play, they, they have they do rough and tumble play and they kind of pin each other. And the big rat always wins, be, can win because it's it's bigger and stronger. And what um, Piaget discovered was that the little rat initiates the play. And if the big rat doesn't let the little rat win 30% of the time, the little rat will stop inviting the big rat to play. Hmm. And now, now the big rat doesn't have the the benefit of of the play. And so it's it's a it's a mutual thing, and it's it's a you know it's a morality of fair play is actually mm -hmm. built in to the the circuits, and you know you can see it with a dog, and the dog will play rougher or or gentler. With and it doesn't have to be taught that it just it knows that. Well, I guess it's taught in the sense that you know it plays too rough, and then you know there's a little yelp, and and okay, well that's that's too far, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just fascinating to me, but understanding those kinds of things i think play is just you know it well it's just critical it's like when you look at you look at you know the hierarchy of needs which i'm not sure i, I totally bought into i'm not but, a big fan of it yeah 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 but what i've noticed is at the top of the hierarchies of almost everyone i know is playing mm -hmm. yeah and it's like well really well i thought it was you know money and power it's like yeah but what are they doing with all that it's so they have leisure time so they can play, you know, they, they get a bigger boat or they get a bigger, like, it's not that you get a bigger, you know, a bigger building. It's like, you, you know, most people are like, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to get something to, I'm going to get a faster car. I'm going to mm -hmm. get a, you know, people play in all kinds of different ways. But, but to me, it feels like that's what people are ultimately trying to go after. And, and I think it's just make things, I don't know. I'm, I'm a big proponent of it. So. And, and and what you just said factors strongly in this conversation for me because I'm trying to figure out what could you assemble that has multi-purpose but that feels like play that that keeps you that keeps you in that state of play with people you really love to play with, right? How do how do how do we find uh, a combo of activities uh, which then let you just keep doing that? without eating your, eating your time. I mean, a friend of mine started a company that's pretty well known around the world. He tried 15 different business models and we had dinner like 15 years ago where he said, uh, you know, Jerry, I'm a prisoner of my company. I, I'm, you know, yeah. I have to give this seminar like 200 times a year. And if, and if it's not me at the front of the room, nobody shows up for the seminar. And none of the other revenue streams generate enough lift that I can kind of hand this over and retire out. And I was like, I don't want that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I am fortunate, and I said this at the beginning, and I'll repeat it again, that I, I'm not in a position of, oh, I'm losing my house. I need to make these products work. Right. I understand every day that I'm lucky that I don't, I'm not in that situation. Um, and so this is this is just more like I'm gonna keep doing these things because they're the, they're my ping pong balls underwater. I can't I can't hold them down. They just they'll pop up on their own. And and that's if I'm gonna do that, should I bother trying to come up with a model that you're describing, which sounds really interesting. So the model the model we're talking about would be very easy to, to prototype. Like there's 15 different subscription platforms. You could pick one. <clears throat> you could, <clears throat> and I wouldn't go with, I wouldn't go with, with an advertising based platform where you need to get a massive audience because that suddenly plops you into a completely different place. I, I would, you know, fall into some place where you have kind of, it's sort of like what Substack is doing, but I'm not sure Substack or Ghost are right for you. But Substack is cool because for most Substack writers, you can subscribe to them without uh, paying them, or you can pay them. And if you pay them, they've got some uh, some extra goodies that that sort of come behind the paywall in some sense. And it's really simple. It's easy to understand. The platform supports the repeated broadcast of stuff to the to the audience that's busy signing up. 
Uh, and, and, and again, it wouldn't take a lot of people signing up to what you're generating for you to equal or exceed the one of your one of your revenue streams. Um, and I think it would take less time in some sense, and, mm -hmm. and 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 you would avoid the context switching. So that's that's kind of so. So the question that I'm drawn to is, what what keeps you from experimenting with that border zone of okay, okay, I'm going to take some of these these best things I've done and then put them into behind some kind of subscription. Um, okay, well, subscription to me, um, well, on the good side. If I'm going to post them somewhere, might as well post them there. Right? And that's kind of my my the thing that initiated all this was like, well, if I'm already doing this stuff, am I just being stupid here and missing out on a bunch of people who would say, please, I'll pay for this because I I, I want it, you right. know. And I'd like and, you to I'd like you to be able to generate more of them. Yeah. Um, subscription to me means regular, timed, consistent deliverables. And I don't know how these subscription platforms work. Um, and that makes me wonder like, okay, cause I can't, I can't predict when these things happen. Mm -hmm. they, and the, the, the one thing that is consistent is when I, am on one, I don't, I lose my sense of time. Like I'm just, you know, it's the middle of winter and I'm out using the, the saw next to the car, you know, and I don't care that it's cold. Mm -hmm. I'm on a mission to get this thing done. And it's, it's the same way in, in negative ways as well. If I have money driven projects from my real work, I'll set it aside because I feel like I, this thing is just, it's here and it's asking me to play with it. And I have right. to, I have to do it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll wake up at five in the morning because I, I have this, like this thing I want to get done, you know? And so it's that the subscription side of it is, it's like, that feels, it feels like, you know, the, the typical social media marketing kind of, cadenced okay well you need to have your blog post every day and you need to have all this right um and my i do have a continuous output but it, it is all over the place kind of yeah so, so what you're saying about consistent you know fresh content etc cetera, etc cetera, like yeah. you know in caps and in quotes um is true of a particular approach toward media, social media, and building audiences and all of that. And it's yeah. probably very true if you're trying to build a mass audience and you're trying mm -hmm. to like go big or go home or whatever. Yeah, that, may, is my, that is not my goal. And it, may, goal. Not, it, may, it may not be true of a quirky yet fascinating um, stream of interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the first thing. But the second thing is, um, if you look at the things you have lying on the table already, you could queue those up and very likely have a stream of interesting things to do for a year or two. I have a feeling that you've got enough things, oh. enough things around, in particular if you spent a month on a thing and said, here's a different way of thinking about it or using it. Hey, here's a systems thinking approach to it. Hey, we went out and played and here's a video of what we did. Whatever. But if, but if you sort of stood around an artifact that's in the stream here and play with it, that would work great. So, so, and that would take the pressure off of doing something new now for the next monthly episode, which is due on Tuesday, right? Which is, which is the thing I think you and I both don't like and, and, and are trying to avoid. Yeah. Yeah. There's the pressure of doing it. And then, the, and then it becomes, I get my own way. Yeah. Hey, Honestly. I hear you. You know, it's like, no, now it has to be good. Yeah. Which, which is silly because the feedback I get says that the other stuff is good. Yeah. And you, have, you have personal quality standards that, that mean it's going to be good. So set that one aside, right? Yeah. Set that worry aside. But, it, it, but it's got to be better for me to post it for pay. 
you know, that kind um, of stuff. And it's like, it actually doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So is there a way to explore that space or to help you get past that? Because it feels like, it feels like, um, it feels like you have some own internal mental barriers that keep you from posting to the public for pay under whatever framework or platform it might be. And there's plenty to choose from, but there's something, something in your head is keeping you from trying that. Um, one of them is these things are really simple and I know simple, they're simple on the side of, on the other side of complexity, yeah. which is the value, but it's hard for me. Like, well, yeah, it's just these things here. Well, that seems pretty simple. You know, at least that's the way I think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's one challenge. And then, uh, the idea of finished, you know, this is something that's like a finished model or something like that is so to, to build on what that means to me, maybe your rhythm is instead of, Hey, here's a simple thing I finished and good luck with you. <clears throat> and then here's another simple thing I finished and good luck to you. Instead of that, what your rhythm could be is I'm going to tell a story right now about how this thing showed up that looks pretty simple. And, and you record yourself telling the story in whatever form you want with friends, uh, and some hot coffee or by yourself <clears throat> or what, I don't, I don't know. But, but the first piece is the introduction about this is how messy it was at the start. And this is what some of the thinking I went through. And then it showed up as this thing. Then here's the thing. And then there's this postscript. There's this, this epilogue that says, by the way, this, this thing's kind of half finished. It's, it's first, it has a, it's a component in these other things. And here's how it connects to this and this and this and this. But then also here are the open questions that left in my head. And here's how it's in some sense incomplete in a way that you can help me complete or whatever. And, and so, so instead of dropping completed objects, you're actually telling stories around them and, and leaving open questions and things like that. And it becomes this this rhythm that people get used to. It's like, oh, okay, good. So, so now we're done with the mobile for uh, DSRP. So um, now we're starting a new thread and a new journey and a new story into a different thing that's going to show up. And by the way, um, you know, when Dickens and others were writing their books, a lot of these things were serialized in magazines in the early magazines and people mm -hmm. were dying for the next month because there'd be a cliffhanger at the end of the first chapter, the first delivery. And you know, a lot of these writers were busy writing the book as the magazine went to press. Uh, so there's some pressure, but some excitement and some, like, like serialization is a good thing. Like it, like it creates a dramatic arc. It creates a, a background where you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, and, and, and I'm noticing you're looking down and not at me very much. No, I'm, means... I'm writing notes. Okay, good, good. Because I'm, I'm worried that I'm like adding pressure that you don't want or don't need. I'm trying to like just really be helpful and um, listen with care to what has passion for you, where your life energy feels like it is, and also what your natural gifts are, which are plentiful and fun and, and always like, like when you make things, they're full of joy. They're just like, like little joy gifts. Um, and that's great, but, but they're also not joy gifts like, hey, look, I carved an ivory elephant. Um, but rather, hey, look, here's a, a component of systems thinking and here's how it might help you in, in the world and all that. Cool. Um, I, I think you are, you are you have the idea that they're, they're joy gifts in the best way. Um, I think they're, it's sappy, but but it's it's a it's a little flame, mm -hmm. and it's like here here I can light your candle, <laughs> you know that that's what it feels like to me is it's like it's not just an object I want you to buy, it's a thing I want you to know because right. because wow this could really this, this look at how happy this made me understanding this, that thing this is the you best know? kind of learning this is like the best kind of of sort of learning. And I hate the words teaching and education uh, and school. Um, so for me, it's, it's so much about learning. Uh, but, but you're like a great coach, teacher, expositor, 
uh, fellow student of life and, and, and you're exposed to stuff that matters and you're busy translating into simple stuff that makes it more accessible, more useful. Like that, that's just awesome. Yeah, that, that last sentence is, is that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's defense against the dark arts in the real way mm -hmm. sense, because for me, if I know these things, I can go into an environment that feels, well, I, I go, I go into fewer and fewer environments where I feel like, uh Oh, I don't know what I'm going to possibly do it here. I've never been here before. Mm -hmm. and now with all these things I've grabbed, it's like, oh, I can walk in there and know that I can handle it. And this is the, the phrase I've been, I, I don't know if I coined it or not, but uh, competence builds confidence. And what I noticed is that, especially in my hockey coaching, it was like, as soon as you learn a skill, then you're more confident. Mm -hmm. It's not about, oh, you can do it. Oh, I, I believe in you. And, you know, that's, that's a good environment to have. But actually learning a skill, even a tiny one, creates confidence and that stacks. And you learn more things and that's where you now have the ability to, to go off and do, do new things, enter the realm of chaos and, and not be afraid and come back with something, something great. So, all right. I've ex I've gone over our little hour here. So. Well, it's I'm unclear how long these sessions should be because the, should they be 60 minutes, 90 minutes? I don't know. Uh, we're friends, so I would stay on for a, a really long time, except I had a, a call with, with Pete Book to, to, to catch sure. up. We have, we have a standing call. Um, by the way, there's a confidence competence loop by Kevin Eikenberry, which Google's first when I Google for competence builds confidence, and I'll, I'll add that to my brain. <clears throat> uh, and then I'm, I'm, and then I'm going to shoot a short video of my reflections from our conversation and send you that uh, after. Um, so what's in your head or what's in your heart or what uh, was this helpful? What, did it open any new questions? Did it turn over new soil? Cause you, you've been working on this for a long time. You're, I, we, I, I feel like this is a, 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 a very nice but constant quest in your yeah. In your mind. Yeah. Well, and, and you you know about my uh, uh, thinking skills for kids that that started a little while ago, which then turned into a grid of stuff, which then, you know, sitting out on a picnic table with a pair of scissors, turned into a card deck. And what it, what it was was a way to take all of my things that I had been working on and they all like they integrated they system fit. thinking was the was the last piece yeah because it was thoughts what is the nature of a thought which was the systems thinking then there was memory there was creativity so design thinking and scientific process and all that sort of stuff games which is the play portion, stories, the narrative portion. And then there's an experiential, like how does perception work, um, attention, perception, balance, et cetera. Um, and then at the top is you, the unique bundle of potential that we all are. And, and what, what I thought was like, this made, this makes my whole life make sense. Mm -hmm my whole curiosity pursuit life, we'll, we'll say that. All mm -hmm. of the things that I was going after, it's like it puts them all into one thing. And it's a, it's, a, it's a structure that makes sense and you can enter it at any point. And it's, I don't know, it's about a hundred cards and they all, you can mix and match them, but there is kind of a framework for it and, and how they belong, at least in my mind. And I think, you know what, this is, this is like my, my magnum opus like this was it just happened and now i think okay now like, are the cards in the world can i buy a deck well you can't but you know i mean i'm sure you made a deck of cards but yeah there they you, are you could 
turn this into a thing people people could buy. I have a small collection yeah. of decks of decks of cards. I do too. Yeah. I, I realized that was that I had a collection of decks of cards, which made me thought, oh, I like decks of cards. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that they're, they're just nice because they're modular and they, you know. What, what do you call these? Um, so it went through a number of iterations and the, I, they, they were, um, they were the cogs mm -hmm. and you put them all together and, and become a metacog. And it was, you know, it was, it was all these thinking tools and mm -hmm. they were basically the cogs of thinking. And then, then I went on to, um, the, the latest iteration of it was, um, you take the word symphony and replace the last two letters with me as in I, like me, mm -hmm. symphony. And it is the harmonious way to um, essentially, you know, think, save, create, and compose the unique symphony of your life. And it's it's the multi-pattern style. And the symphony just made sense to me because it's, it's multi-layered, it's happening over time, you know, you go through it once, it's all, and it just, I don't know, but it's still a name that I struggle with. But then I think, well, who cares if it's just for me? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, that makes sense to me, so. And and if you're gonna put these out for other people to buy, then they need a, a simple name that works, that resonates somehow. And that that's a that's its own little exploration, it's, its own little task. Um, but I like that. I, I, and, <clears throat> and, and I have a lot a, of Google Wax, <laughs> by the yeah. way. I have a lot of, of, of words that, so anyway. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and there's also like people like Alain de Botton who does the School of Life. And there, there are now lots of people online doing philosophy manuals, how to live your life advice, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But again, <clears throat> you're really not interested in, I, I don't think you're interested in mass market at all. I think you're really interested in finding the niche you really love. And, and that's kind of more tribe and less audience. And if you treat them as tribe and co-inhabitants in this journey to understand how to live better, that, that like there's no reason you can't make a living doing that and not feel like, oh my God, I need fresh content tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, this, the, the people that I thought were most relevant to this were um, independent schools and homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. because, oh my God. Yeah. Because of the framework, the way the framework works, it's like, I am not one, as you know, I'm not one who's going to tell you how you should live your life. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's tools that help you figure that out on your own. Like you can use these, if you understand systems thinking, I don't care what system you think about, but now you can. Exactly. So here's a, here's a query I have open, which is, and I haven't put this in my brain yet, so I will when we're done talking, but I'm a member of ASDE, the Alliance for Self-Directed Education. And under lockdown, I was pretty sure when lockdown first happened that self-directed learning or unschooling or homeschooling or whatever you call it would just explode. Sure. Would explode like Zoom exploded. It, yeah. has, not, it has not. It has not at all. No, and parents are busy. <laughs> well, no, but parents are looking for great things to do with and for their kids. And if terrific unschooling resources were showing up, they would have shared them out. They would have done, they would have, like, I think there would have been tremendous energy to apply them because otherwise the kids were at home trying to figure out, okay, what time do you have to be on for what class and what's on your syllabus, which is in a stupid PDF file from the teacher or something, right? It's like, okay, do you want, do you want more misery and a, a system that's trying to replicate itself online or, or can we create some new environment? And a, a, a thing I'd love to know is, I'm willing to bet that there's a couple of unschooling initiatives that have gotten a lot of traction during lockdown. I just don't yeah. know about them. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to know what they are and if they have platforms and if you'd like to join some of that, because there might be some really, really fun energy in those crowds and they might have enough people that that like that it works that it works as a as a community as a tribe of learners and that would be really fun to figure out so I, i'll do a little bit of searching but but um, i think that would be a thing you would enjoy doing as well yes uh if i i, I think you hit on something that is interesting to me 
you can you can set up your site that is here's your platform, here's my Symphony platform, and everything on the site is that. And then I'm responsible for, you know, all the mail lists and all the other stuff that goes with it. Or you have this system where someone else has developed this platform, and it's like Teachable or it's like you know, anything like that, where they're they're looking for people to, um, to be part of the, the, you know, to create things that go on there. And they're not, like, if I don't do it for two months, it doesn't matter because there's a bunch of other people who are doing it. And um, that, you know, that's an idea that is interesting. And I don't know why I didn't, why I, you know, I've been considering it, but I don't know why I haven't actually made, maybe it's the formality of a class, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. These platform choices make a difference. Like, you know, Substack versus Khan Academy versus Vlog Brothers and what they do. And, and I don't know how most of them work. I mean, I don't know how the Vlog Brothers make money. I, I, and I think they're doing fine because the brothers are published authors and make movies and other sorts of things. But yeah. but but somewhere in there, there's a lot of work that they're doing. They're, they're, they produce excellent media and large quantities of it. So it's amazing. So, so, so there we are. Yeah, there we are. Um, thank you. Thank you for this. I will send you a, a summary afterward. We welcome to open this conversation up again, you know, as we go, but um, it's been really fun. Thank you. I think the, the biggest takeaways for me were this, this subscription idea, which then whatever that looks like, I don't know if that's the right word, but that it, it creates a channel to deliver the things that I've been interested in and have been making to a group of people who are interested in them for no other reason than the same reasons that I am. Alignment of passions. Yeah. Alignment of passions and where those passions are really serving. There are lots of parents out there who'd like their kids to grow up as good critical thinkers. That's like a big deal. Yeah. And, and you're just perfectly equipped to, to be a thinking partner on that journey. Yeah, especially because it's, I, I really want to focus on the, this thing here instead of, okay, if you take my, you know, 40 week class in critical thinking skills. Exactly. I was like, it's like <laughs> you know, please okay. God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's not it. And so, Finding, like you said, the platform is critical. Yeah. Where, where bite size and stackable. Mm -hmm. That to and, me and, is and, very and, intriguing. And elaborated. Like, like, don't think of the bite size as just the object, but there's a story that explains how the object came to being. There's questions the object leaves in the world. There's what Joe Bob did and Sally did with the object. There's a whole bunch of stuff around each object that makes it more richer, more interesting, more useful, a better learning experience, so. Yes, and that that fits with what's happening in my own life as I work with these tools and start to see how they integrate. Yeah. So. Um, that makes sense yeah. to me. Thank you, Jerry. Cool, thank you. This has been beautiful. I really appreciate it. Well, <laughs> I'm the receiver here, so thank you. <laughs> uh, until soon. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.